All right, everybody, welcome back to the forest. Today, we're going to be going over a few more basics of survival. Today, we're going to be covering uh, food, water, and medicine. So you'll notice it's the morning, the sun's just arising, and every time you wake up from uh, using the Z function to, to sleep, whether you're at a shelter or uh, at the yacht or some other pre-fashioned place, uh, you will wake up with your hunger and thirst depleted. So that's going to be your, your most immediate need on day two. You survived day one, you didn't get eaten by cannibals, great job! But now we gotta do a little bit more to keep ourselves alive. So all I've done since you guys last saw was I made this campfire. Um, I also killed some seagulls, and with the, uh, those seagull kills, I managed to get small generic meat. Now, with this small generic meat, I can toss this on the campfire, and we can cook that up. I'm going to go ahead and just toss all three of them on there. And the way you do that is you just look at your fire, and that R button that's right above the leaf there, uh, you press that just to cycle through your, your placeable objects, and then you press the C button, to actually place them. When our food is ready, the same thing as when we were uh, on the plane, the Pac-Man symbol means that we can eat it. Now don't wait too long. When your food is on the fire, it can burn. And when it burns, it will not replenish your uh, hunger the same way that just good cooked meat will. Now cooking meat is great, but the problem is, is that you can't take cooked meat with you. If you want to be bringing food around with you, you need to build something called the drying rack and you'll find that under this section under food and water in your survival guide so go ahead and select drying rack and you'll see it looks like a, a drying rack we can just place that anywhere I'll just place that here for now and we need sticks for this so let's just go ahead and put some sticks in I only have three so let's just go grab two more sticks now what drying your meat does is it well it's what it does what it says it dries your meat so that uh, it pr is preserved for longer. For some reason, the game doesn't let you take cooked meat. I don't know why exactly, even if it were to have like a low spoil timer, I still think you should be able to take it, but you can't. Um, so all meat works with the drying rack, aside from some of the small generic meat. You can't place small generic meat on here, but you can place the regular generic meat, rabbit, and what we're going to be placing, lizard. So I think it takes about 12 to 24 hours for the meat to dry out so we're gonna just go ahead and get that set up and we're gonna wait um, if we need to eat in the meantime there are things we can do in the forest we will find different types of berries and many of those are edible the only ones that aren't edible I believe are the twin berries and on this side of the island I don't think we get snowberries I think you can get sick from eating snowberries or I actually may be thinking of a different video game um, while we're here, and this guy's here, if you're at this beach and you're by the yacht, there's going to be one food source that's readily apparent to you, and that is the turtle. Ooh, money. Look at that. Two cash collected. All right. So the turtle is exceptionally easy to kill. <laughs> Took me a couple tries there. It's what you want to kill in order to be able to build a rain catch. There's only one way to be able to build a rain catch in this game. You can't use tarps or anything like that. You need... First, we'll get that nice succulent meat, and you need the turtle shell. Okay, so the turtle shell has a number of uses, three of them, I believe. Uh, you can use it as a weapon. I believe it's also fairly decent at blocking damage. I'm not 100% sure, though. Yeah, if you right-click, you can block damage. Right, uh, Left-click, you can hit, but it's not the most effective weapon. But it has two other really neat functions. First one I'll show you has nothing to do with food or water. You already know it's going to be a rain catch. But while I have it here, uh, you can use it as a sled. So in order to use it as a sled, run. Run towards your, your cliff edge or your decline, wherever it is it's going to be. Jump up, look down, and left click. And your character will ride it down the hill. And that's pretty nifty. Uh, one thing about the turtle shell to keep in mind is you can only carry one of them at a time. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pull out our survival guide. We're going to go back to the food and water section, select the water collector, excuse me, and uh, we'll just place that somewhere. Maybe we can place it at like a really odd angle so it never collects any water. Um, I'll place that. I'm going to be putting more drying racks there. So I think what I'll do is actually keep my water on this side. 
Okay, so there's that. Let's go ahead and put this turtle shell in, and I need three more sticks. But now that I've gone ahead and placed that turtle shell there, we can go ahead and kill our next turtle. So, in these rain collectors that we're building with the turtle shells, the water does evaporate over time. And because of that, there's really no point in making a massive number of rain catchers. You want to have more than one. You want to have a few of them. Um, I mean, it's not particularly crucial to have many of them, but I'd say if you're on a single-player world, two to three of them will get you by. And it'll do more than get you by. That's all you need. Um, you know what? Just a quick aside. This bush, I believe, is a twin berry bush. So if I eat one of these twin berries... Was it a twin berry? I don't know if it was a twin berry or not. Seems like it's refilling my hunger. So we can go into our nature guide and check. So I guess these were blackberries. That must be new, because I've never seen blackberries before. Okay. Anyway, we were talking about the uh, the rain catchers. So, as great as the rain catchers are, they do evaporate water over time. So there's really no difference in having uh, 20 versus having 5 of them. So, you know, make a few of them, but you don't need a ton. Leave the turtle population alone. You don't need to just start killing a ton of turtles. You do need to eat, and there are a ton of turtles in this game. There aren't any right now, but every single day you'll have anywhere from 7 to 10 turtles come up on the shore. So there's really no shortage of meat there. And the turtles, in case you're wondering, drop uh, generic meat. They drop two of them at a time. And I believe you can only carry four at a time. So we have this generic meat. We could cook it up, but remember, it's going to have to be eaten from the fire. And it'll spoil rather quickly if you leave it on the fire because it'll burn. If you want to preserve the meat and use it later, the only way you can do that is to hang it up on the rack. Um, it's not an infinite timer, but it feels like it. It, it'll, it won't go bad for you, I, I promise. If you put it up there, it'll be good for, I mean, I don't even know, seven or more in-game days. It takes a long time for it to start going bad. You get generic meat from, from, uh, from deers, from the turtles. Uh, seagulls and other small critters drop small generic meat, which you cannot hang up. Uh, I just want to remind you guys that that meat has to be cooked on the fire. Um, I don't have any on me right now. But it'll spoil in your inventory, so you can just drop it. I mean, you after a while, you won't even need to worry about it. Pretty soon, the only reason you're killing birds is because you want their feathers. Always have snacks on you. Snacks are exceptionally useful. They're just like meat in that they restore your food. They restore your stamina, they restore your energy, but they don't go bad. They don't replenish as much, but that doesn't matter because you can carry many of them. I think you can carry up to 15 of them. I have 12 on me right now. I'm not going to eat one right now, but they're all over the island. You can find them in suitcases, you can find them in caves, you can find them uh, in parts of the plane wreck. They're a tremendous source of nourishment. And they're one that you don't need to worry about because, again, they do not spoil. I think that's pretty much it for food. There are also mushrooms in the game. Um, I haven't experimented too much with how edible they are. I know you can put them in some of the more advanced food recipes, which is something we will not be getting into in this video, as I have not learned what I needed to learn to really explain that to you guys. Uh, but down the line, I will do a more advanced food crafting tutorial. But that's basically it as far as food goes. There's really not much else you need to worry about. Just keep your stomach full and... Then you have to worry about your thirst. So we have our rain catch, but lo and behold, it's a bright, sunshiny day, and we have no water. But if you look at our thirst meter, we are pretty thirsty. Now, there's a couple ways we can go about taking care of that. First is, well, I mean, first is clean water. If it rained, we'd have water in here, and we could just drink it from here, and it would be clean and fresh. This isn't like Ark, where you can just go up to the ocean and drink out of the ocean. Thankfully, it doesn't work like that. Um, there is a small lake over in this direction which we will go to so you can drink straight from water sources in this game although i don't recommend it because it is polluted water you can drink just by coming up to the water's edge and holding down the e button um, i'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now but there is a chance that you will get sick from it we did not get sick from oh yeah we did we got sick from it that time and it'll it'll lower your health but there is another way of getting water so Boiling water is obviously what you're expecting me to talk about, and that's what we are going to talk about. You can boil water, but we don't have anything to boil water in. The only thing you can boil water in in this game is with a cook cooking pot. I don't know why it was so difficult for me to say. What the hell am I hearing? Oh my god, there's a, there's a dude right there. I don't know if you guys see him. 
Okay, so there's not always enemies in these villages, so you can come to these villages pretty reliably and get what you need out of them. And what we need out of this village is right in here, in their fire, they have an old pot, and that is what we need. I can hear him snoring, that's really, really creepy. That's what we need to gather some water from this water source. So, okay, here we go. So, go into your inventory and equip your old pot using the left click button. And what you can do, hold down C and you will have yourself a pot currently filled with polluted water. So we can then take that pot back to our campfire and boil it. It used to be that you actually had to have the pot out to carry the water back, but now you can actually put it away and equip something else, which is actually very handy, although it's a bit unrealistic. I mean, you, it's not like you'd be able to put an open pot of water in your backpack <laughs> and not expect it to spill out everywhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and demonstrate real quick before we go to the next location where you can get cooking pots. I just want to show you guys how to put the water down. So it's not going to be in your R menu. You're not going to be able to do it from there. You actually have to re-equip your pot, which you can drink straight from. And again, that will take care of your thirst, but it may lower your health. So you place it on the campfire by equipping it and pressing the C button. And then you just have to wait. Same as with uh, cooking meat. So another note about the boiled water. You can't take it with you. At least you can't take the pot with you. So it has to stay on the fire, but that's okay. I'm just gonna leave this pot here for now so that I can pick up the other pot that we're going to go to. There is another pot uh, close to this location. It's also along the coast, but uh, I'm not gonna go that way. We're gonna cut across the island going this way. So this is the place you'll see we can have, we can grab this pot right here. So that's it, right there, right there. So those are two locations you can get the old pot. There are more on the island, but that's all you need to worry about if you're spending your time in this location. There is one other way you can, or two other ways you can handle your thirst. You can drink booze, which will lower your stamina, I believe, because you know, you're getting drunk. But there's also soda, which doesn't restore as much thirst, but it does restore your energy, or I'm sorry, your stamina. I think it also restores a bit of energy as well. So that's how you take care of thirst in this game, guys. The last topic we're going to cover today is what to do when your health is not at maximum. As you'll see, ours is not. Our health is, what, two-thirds right now? Maybe a little bit more than that? So there's uh, two, I guess you can call it, three different medicines in this game. First, you have the painkillers, the ones that come in the bottle. These spawn in suitcases, and they're also just found randomly throughout the uh, the island. But you can also craft together your own medicine using aloe vera and marigold. You see, you can create meds or meds plus. Now, to create meds plus, you need to add in cone flour, and cone flour will give you meds plus. It's just a stronger medicine. I find that I almost never need to worry about that, though. So long as you have just regular meds, that's good enough. And to be honest... You'll, you'll find enough painkillers around the island so where you never even really need to create your own medicine, but that is something you can do, and if you're in a pinch, it's good to have this stuff around. Right now, I'm just going to take one of these. All right, so there's also another uh, thing you can make. You can make the energy mix, and that is, as you might expect, for your stamina, or maybe it's for your energy. I don't know. I've never really used it. I've never really found a need to, um, but that's going to be, uh, what is this? chicory and cone flour. You can create energy mix and to make energy plus you add in aloe vera. So let's just go over that one more time. To make meds you want aloe vera and marigold. If you want to spice it up a notch you put in cone flour. And to make energy mix you use chicory and cone flour and if you want to kick it up a notch that's when you add in aloe vera. So the only difference between energy mix plus and meds plus is one has chicory one has marigold. But again, you really don't need to worry about those too much. If I'm missing anything, guys, go ahead and leave me a comment down below letting me know. But I think I've got pretty much everything covered. Uh, before we head out, the sun is going down, so we got to hurry. Yeah, it looks like uh, our rain catches are filling up. Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about. I was hoping to find a couple deer. So if you can find a couple of deer and get their hide, you need two deer hide for this, you can create the water skin. Um, that'll allow you to carry water around with you. It 
it has several uses. It doesn't. It's not just a one-use thing. Um, it's a. It goes down by a percentage. So however how, however thirsty you are, that's that. I guess that percentage will come out of the water skin. But I feel that it has somewhere between three and four uses, depending on when you're using it. I usually drink when I have about a third of my thirst left. Okay, guys, that is going to do it for today's episode. The sun is setting, and we're going to head back. Oops. We are going to head back to our uh, yacht so we can go to sleep. And remember, when you go to sleep right when the sun goes down, you wake up right when the sun comes up. So that's what I'm going to do, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you did, drop a like rating down below. Uh, subscribe if you're new. We'll be going over a bit more about the forest over the next couple days. Uh, I'm taking a break from my ARC videos for now. Uh, these are just easier, and I'm enjoying this game a bit more than ARC at the moment. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed with ARC because I couldn't play Aberration on my computer. And my computer couldn't ha handle the graphical intensity of it. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it here today. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will see you guys for the next episode of The Forest when we talk about combat and how to protect yourself. Until then, guys, take it easy. We'll see you next time.